video, we will briefly look at the 2023 elections in Turkey. Turkey had its first democratic election in 1950. Democratization proved to be a bumpy ride interrupted by several military interventions. By 2000, the economy started to collapse again under a succession of short-lived coalition governments. In the 2002 elections, the electorate punished established political parties and protest votes carried the newly founded AK Party or AKP to power. Recep Tayyip Erdogan became the new prime minister of Turkey. During the initial years, Erdogan and his party undertook democratic reforms and adhered to the economic stabilization program initiated by the previous government, which provided for central bank autonomy and a transparent public tender law. The result was spectacular economic growth. In December 2004, the European Parliament voted in favor of starting membership talks with Turkey. The EU candidate status increased the confidence of global investors in Turkey and massive amounts of capital flowed into the country. Erdogan's economic discipline and cooperative foreign policy lasted until he was victorious again in the 2011 elections. By then, he had subdued the military and the judiciary and had consolidated his power at home. In 2019, a headline of The Guardian summarized the eventful 2010s. From reformer to new sultan, Erdogan's populist evolution. The inventor of 21st century populism moved Turkey away, away from EU to appeal to the base. The Zipak demonstrations of 2013 had Erdogan clearly disclosed his authoritarian tendencies. The 2013 corruption and bribery operation was a criminal investigation that involved several key members of the Turkish government. Prosecutors accused several family members of four cabinet ministers of bribery, corruption, fraud, money laundering, and gold smuggling. To top it all, there was a failed coup attempt in 2016. In the 2017 referendum, voters narrowly endorsed a controversial constitutional amendment to shift from a parliamentary system to a presidential one. The 2018 election resulted in a victory for the incumbent President Erdogan. The presidential system created major governance problems. The parliament was weakened, local governments were undermined, the judiciary became more dysfunctional, the bureaucracy was paralyzed, institutions deteriorated, and immigration and capital flight increased. On the other hand, providing the otherwise divided opposition a joint anchor of resistance, the presidential system unintentionally revived Turkey's opposition parties. The formation of splinter parties from the ruling AKP and the need to form alliances to win an election under the new system posed a serious challenge to Erdogan. In the 2019 local elections, the main opposition party, CHP, won major cities including Istanbul, Ankara, and Izmir. If the government can survive the deepening economic crisis until then, the next general elections will be held on June 18, 2023. The president will be elected with a two-round system. If no candidate receives more than 50% of the vote in the first round, there will be a second one for the top two cont contenders. Simultaneously, parliamentary elections will be held to elect 600 members of parliament to the Grand National Assembly of Turkey. The leaders of six opposition parties formed an alliance to abolish Erdogan's, Erdogan's super presidential system and to return to a strengthened parliamentary system. They have strong economic steam, but uh, are mostly silent on specific foreign policy issues as they don't want to provide ammunition to populist Erdogan for accusing them of treason. The roundtable round format rejects hierarchy in favor of deliberations among equals. Critics claim that this grouping of parties with different orientations will fail to excite the electorate. But the dominance of charismatic leaders in Turkish politics should better give way to a new era of transparent deliberation. The most likely candidates of the opposition for the presidential position are Ekrem İmamoğlu, mayor of Istanbul, Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu, leader of CHP, and Mansur Yavaş, mayor of Ankara. 
Here we see the distribution of seats in the Turkish parliament based on the 2018 elections. The dark brown and orange parties on the right are the ultra-nationalist MHP and the Islamist-leaning AKP respectively. Together they constitute the ruling people's alliance and have a majority. The gray and red parties are the moderate nationalist E party and the center left CHP respectively. They form the core of the opposition nation alliance. The magenta color represents the HDP appealing to the Kurdish minority. Let's briefly look at recent election polls as well. Since 2018, the popularity of the ruling alliance decreased significantly as support for opposition parties increased. The validity and reliability of the many recent election polls are debatable, but the graphical summary of opinion polls conducted since July 2018 clearly shows the general trend of opposition parties right, rising and the parties of the ruling alliance declining. This chart summarizes polling data for the two contending alliances and a potential third alliance of the HDP with small ultra-leftist parties. The HDP appealing to the Kurdish voters is a hot potato for other opposition parties as it doesn't deny its links to the terrorist organization PKK. However, most of the HDP voters are expected to vote for the candidate of the opposition nation alliance in the presidential election. The trend lines below show that, short of a miracle, the incumbent government cannot win the next election. Let's briefly look at some economic indicators as well. The chart below shows the dollarization rate in Turkey, that is the share of foreign exchange deposits by residents in total bank deposits. When citizens lose confidence in the Turkish lira and the government that is supposed to defend it, they seek to protect their savings by converting them into US dollars or other reliable foreign currencies. In contrast, a trustworthy government leads them to return to Turkish lira. The inverted arch below indicates that Erdogan came to power riding a crashing economic wave and will most likely be swept away by another. Below, we see another inverted arch showing the evolution of Turkey's five-year credit default swap, which is an indicator for perceived likelihood of default. A humiliating economic wave is clearly heaving up again. Yet another inverted arch illustrates consumer inflation during the last 20 years. This obviously is a burning issue for voters as the current inflation rate stands at, a mouse, at almost 80% according to the government. A group of independent economists calculated to be twice that figure. Let's also look at the recent emotional climate in Turkey. According to the Gallup Global Emotions Report 2022, Turkey has the second angriest society in the world. Considering the inflation rate, this is no surprise at all. The most recent World Happiness Report confirms this finding by situating Turkey towards the bottom of the list. Polling data, economic trends, and the emotional climate all tell us that there will be a governmental change in Turkey in 2023. But some observers expect Erdogan to pull a rabbit from his head and somehow win the elections. Others claim that he will not enter an election which he will lose, even if he has to start a war to delay elections. Erdogan will likely will base his campaign on the classic survival team. External and internal enemies are destroying Turkey. We are fighting against them and we need your support. Critics warned against Erdogan initiating military action in Syria and Iraq or creating tensions with European countries to attract nationalist voters. Diversionary rhetoric and agenda changers to distract attention from economics already dominate the government's discourse. Changing the English spelling of the country's name to the Turkish Turkey to avoid association with the bird is an example. This, by the way, is a non-starter because there is no U in the English alphabet, a letter notoriously difficult for most for foreigners to pronounce. Hence, in terms of issues, the election will be a contest between perception management based on the control of media and the generous use of public resources and a harsh economic reality. I will conclude with a famous quote from former Prime Minister Demirat. There is no government that an empty cooking pot cannot topple. If you are interested in further short videos on Turkish politics uh, and culture in broken English, please subscribe to my channel and or comment below.